We're going to talk Zach Horowitz. This mm-hmm. was uh, this story was crazy. I remembered. I, I don't know if I, I keep saw. Keep looking over there, even though you guys gave I, me. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if I. I don't know if I remember seeing a video on this or if I read an article previously. But I remember this case, uh, and I just uh, I couldn't believe this because it reminded me. W- this it says actor gets 20 years in prison for running 650 million dollar hollywood ponzi scheme the reason this i feel is so relevant is right now two of the biggest things in entertainment are inventing anna which is about the fake socialite Mm -hmm. and um the the tinder swindler i watched that oh yeah yeah so those the you know fake in hollywood which is kind of hilarious because hollywood is the fakest industry there is but i still get a kick out of the idea that like but not when you do it to us at one point i wish we had done an episode on tinder swindler i at one point i was like 2020 20 20 2022 is the year i get on a dating app because i like don't really like them i don't they don't feel comfortable for me yeah but then i got on that and i was like i want to judge every one of these girls and be like how did you get talked into this but like just not even worth the risk get off the app get off the app oh man. when that one girl at the end was like I'm on the app still. I was like, are you, what? Did wow. you not learn your lesson? Okay. So it says, Zachary Horowitz, 35, received harsh punishment after admitting he built clients. I love the word built. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's up there with Flim Flammer, which is the name mm-hmm. for a, a swindler. Uh, he built clients for faking deals with Netflix and HBO in a six-year scam. I lost my way, he says. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I stumbled. I just, I just I fell stumbled into a Ponzi scheme. My, my favorite is like, have you ever seen this? It's like, a, I, when, when like, it's like a wife trips and falls and McDonald's french fries fall into her mouth. Yeah. She's like, I, I, went I to, like that trend. She's like, I went to eat a salad and then I tripped and fell in McDonald's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or the one it's like, it's a, it's this huge burger and says, I keep trying to make a salad. I don't know what's going wrong. It says, it says the low budget horror movie star uh, who terrorized in... <laughs> I love the violent I I love the extremely aggressive language who terrorized investors with a 650 million dollar Ponzi scheme based on fake deals with HBO and Netflix was sentenced to 20 years in prison on Monday Zachary Horowitz 35 received the punishment in a federal courthouse in downtown Los Angeles after pleading guilty in the case last October the judge also ordered him to pay 230 million dollars in restitution I lost my way, Horowitz told U.S. District Attorney, U.S. District Court Judge Mark Scarcy, 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 mm-hmm. uh, ahead of the sentencing, calling himself a flawed and broken man. A woman sitting with Horowitz's family burst into loud sobs when the prison term was given. One victim who appeared in person to, to deliver an impact statement appeared uh, pleased with the lengthy sentence, but shook his head in disgust when the judge said Horowitz, who, was two, who has two young sons, uh, could wait until March 14th to surrender. So they're like how dare you get yeah march 14th is like a month though like a month away it's not nothing yep so it says horowitz's lawyer uh has <laughs> since has asked for leniency during back and forth uh arguments that touched on claims that horowitz suffers from bipolar disorder and addiction issues the convicted con man who had roles in the fright flicks the devil below in 2021 wow that came out like after he was arrested mm-hmm. and you're not alone in 2020 began his massive ponzi scheme in 2014 prosecutor said falsely telling clients he was so well connected in the entertainment industry that he could acquire film titles for foreign distribution and then license the properties to hbo and netflix and other major streamers and deals offering eye-popping returns of 25 to 40 percent okay isn't the general rule supposed to be if it seems too good to be true it probably is well and i don't know if this is true but one time i read uh, a film critic say basically if you're resume as an actor is only horror films it's a sign that your career is not actually doing particularly well it's very sad uh like if you're doing stuff and then you turn to horror so the fact that this guy is only appearing in horror movies and he's like i'm so well connected like these people must not have really been familiar with the entertainment oh, industry, industry that's right? I, I part of me says like you know you get any horror up. movie stars who watch i'm sorry that's just what i've heard i have no actual idea <laughs> mm-hmm. in reality horowitz was a fraud who used the money to fuel a high-flying hollywood lifestyle filling with filled with private jets and yacht rentals parties in vegas luxury cars and the purchase of a 5.7 million dollar mansion boasting a swimming pool home gym and private screening room on the outskirts of beverly hills i wonder if there was a point where he just felt like he was a producer now and he's just like i think when you're running that kind of scheme you just start being like i have to spend this money and live the life i want to right now because it could fall apart at any second and he's like i'll deliver on these movies eventually (laughs) yeah well it's hard to say right because if he's a sociopath like he doesn't feel bad for taking their money and maybe he does think like oh yeah like like, i like if you're narcissistic enough where you're and like if you're not smart enough to hold on to your money right well also like 
if you really are a sociopath like you don't doubt yourself like like a, like a true mm-hmm. narcissistic sociopath like that he might have 110 percent believed he'd get these movies done even though there's no actual reason like you yep. could think that and he doesn't think he's ever gonna get caught yeah he, or he thinks he can he thinks he can get out of anything that comes yeah. his way yep so it says uh oh man uh horowitz spent more than 6.9 million dollars on american express credit card bills more than 345,000 on chartered planes and boats and more than 604,000 on a mercedes-benz on mercedes-benz and, uh, and audi vehicles uh, defendant ran the largest known Ponzi scheme in the history of this district. U.S. attorney based out of Los Angeles wrote in the recent filing, he burned through a fortune living a life of extravagance while sticking his victims, including some who once believed him to be their friend, with a $230 million bill that has left them financially broken and personally devastated. Three writers addressed these, uh, the court on, in person on Monday, including Robert Henney, a screenwriter who said he lost $1.8 million in the Ponzi scheme, and he described it devastating and un- as a devastating and unending nightmare. Other, uh, others delivered heartbreaking statements in writing, including a 73-year-old widow who lost her Vietnam veteran husband to the effects of Agent Orange. That woman told the court she st- she's still caring for a 46-year-old special needs daughter and didn't have the money to spare. Horowitz robbed me of one-third of my retirement account, she wrote. So it's like, when I picture this story, I think of like well-off Hollywood investors getting robbed, not I think it sounds like it's mm-hmm. a mix, right? Not aging women who are taking care of chil- uh, special needs children and living off uh, a meager well, retirement. Well, and also remember, Rolling Stone's going to pick her as the example because she is so sympathetic. Yes. Not that That's all the, the victims aren't. Yep. It's just that that story is particularly heartbreaking. The, the $100 million guy who lost a million dollars isn't nearly as it's still story wrong. worthy. He is still suffering and he has still been defrauded, but this is like, yeah. it feels more tragic. Yep. Yep, exactly. Uh, that is uh, part of how you spin the narrative, Rolling Stone. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, That's not bad. I mean, she really no. did testify. Yep. It says, he robbed me of the confidence to trust anyone with my invest. Oh, yeah. It says, he robbed me of my confidence to trust anyone with my investments. I realize I will never be able to earn what has been taken from me and my daughter. Yet another unidentified uh, victim, 64, described losing $1.4 million in the scam. I have to return to work to afford food and shelter. I will never, never be able to earn that amount of money back by working. Part of that money was an inheritance from my mother's passing i am emotionally distraught i cry every day and have stopped seeing friends and family because of the shame of this financial loss and have now uh, se- severe trust issues with other human beings if it was not for my spiritual beliefs i would have committed suicide one thing that i think is funny is hollywood has a very strong history of glorifying people who commit cons in movies uh, usually by saying that they only rob, you know, it's Robin Hood. They rob from the rich and they give to the needy mm-hmm. or even like a, a good con movie where they just rob from rich people. But Hollywood has an, uh, a habit of glorifying this type of crime uh, because they're so suave, because they're so good at what they do. And like a con man like this is spending money on Mercedes and the house. Like in, in, from the film perspective, it's like very glamorous. and Which is easy to make risk. in movie because right. it looks great on camera. Right. So uh, I just think it's uh, it, it's kind of a Hollywood reckoning. Like they love these types of stories. They love telling stories about uh, the same thing kind of happened when defund the police was going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you guys love to tell stories of cops and FBI agents and CIA agents because it's, it's easy storytelling. Mm-hmm. But in the real world, you don't realize that it's not the same thing as what you're putting to screen, often with far different real world consequences. Yeah. I think this is kind of an interesting story just because uh, it shows you how much of this is all based on trust. Like you mm-hmm. just have to say enough right things and like blindly... One point like, four million dollars from that lady who said, like I said, she that was an inheritance. She's got to go back to work. Well, now. and it's six hundred and fifty million dollars total. Like yep. six hundred and fifty million dollars. That's crazy. Yep. Um, but it's. I would be really fascinated to see a psychological profile of this guy, the Tinder swindler, like uh, Bernie Madoff. Like, there's a bunch of uh, personality that, or I don't want to say defects, but person personality conditions that go behind someone who's able to do this and i think that's why hollywood tells the story because like it is not the normal person it's a character like, st- it's a fan it's a fascinating character study yeah mm-hmm. that when you're not financially invested in it is is interesting to watch and i understand that well, and like all of these people like so the judge asked for 230 million dollars right but where's like, that gonna come from? where's that gonna come from that guy's gonna declare bankruptcy like there is in, in likelihood there are a lot of people who settle this kind of fraud like maybe not to this level out of court mm-hmm. because you are not going to see financial restitution you might be ordered to get the payment but where does it come from it's never going to come and so it's easier to to have a civil suit that settles and actually get some kind of payment yeah uh but in this case like 
maybe you really want to see this person go to prison. Yep, that's. Um, I mean, that seems like that's going to be the only uh, respite, the or the only um, mm -hmm. bit that. So like these people are like, I have lost everything and I can't retire. But and, at least like, I'll see you go to jail. Like, like is that enough? Out. Do you and care likely, if he get goes to? I mean, like I, I'm not trying to like. It's mm -hmm. good that something happened to him, no. but you know, and it doesn't actually help their financial. They, that lady still has to go back to work. Yep. Well, and even if he goes to jail. Again, I'm hate to spoil a Tinder swindler for anyone, but like all of those girls that he like basically got to take out huge loans or took money from, like they've never received received financial compensation and they are still paying off their credit. And he's got an agent now and wants to make it in Hollywood. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he has like, and he had a girlfriend and he was he never did jail time. I mean, he did a little bit of jail time for it, like. Mm -hmm. Tinder kicked him off the app, I guess. But like, that's his big punishment. Tinder kicked him off the app. I hope you know, actually, he's been banned from all dating apps now. Oh, no, that's, that's not good. enough. Um, I also hope that uh, the is he attractive? I, that that's my question. not to me, but you know, I, I guess like if he was your type for that one, like I hope Netflix get some of the proceeds from Netflix go to these women. Like surely Netflix is not making enough off that film to like. That's a good point. Pay them out. I don't know what the contract is, but maybe they could. In do this that. case, no one's making a film of this. This guy's not going to have the money. Like this will probably get him. Eh, yeah, I don't know if this gets a movie made about it because it might hit too close to home for the industry. Well, and like someone else profits off these people's story, mm -hmm. right? Like that's one of the hard things about telling these. When you have a viol violent crime, there is a law that will protect. Um, you know, the the mur if someone murders someone in your family, that murderer can't then go on and. Profit sell, from, sell the book rights Sell the movie rights Anything They can't profit from that Imagine if But that's Manson, not true of this Imagine if Manson Had uh, trademarked uh, What was it Helter Skelter Crazy The money mm -hmm. he would have made um, So it says uh, according to filing the case, uh, Horowitz gave his victims copies of fabricated licenses and distribution agreements and complete with forged or fictitious signatures uh, when his company, uh, uh, one, in a mil uh, one in MM Capital, I'm guessing that's one in a million. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, uh, began to default in 2019. Horowitz doubled down on his lies, blaming the streaming platforms and produced spoof emails with HBO.com and Netflix uh, addresses to lull his investors into t thinking their money was safe, prosecutors say. Imagine if he had gotten away with it for a few more months, he could have blamed COVID, maybe never got in trouble at all. Because mm -hmm. oh, no. it would have caused such a disruption in the industry. There was such an upheaval in these industries and how things worked. Um, but he never could pay his investors out, so eventually nope. it was always going to fall apart. Yep. Yeah. Because the thing about Ponzi schemes is like you take money from other people to pay back the money that you took from somewhere else. Like you have to have, you know, six hundred fifty million dollars. It's not like it, it, the bubble has to keep going. Yep. And so if he's borrowing five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand dollars from Miracle, mm -hmm. but a million from you, so he can pay that one back but then still use 500,000 and then give up to me and wants 3 million like the yep. ask amount goes up and up and up mm -hmm. yep. Henny recalled getting those emails in a statement in the court on Monday I saw the fake emails from the streaming services they were doing audits and they were apologetic by the time the truth ca finally came out uh, the remaining of my savings were gone so just wow mm -hmm. uh, I can't trust no one tr like that's like that'll uh, inspire trust issues in just about anyone hearing stuff like that like I'm one of those people like I like I tend to be very like um, cynical. Like any opportunity that comes my way, I tend to like. What's the angle yeah. on it, right? Like, well, this actually happens. This sort of like, uh, not always a Ponzi scheme, but there are several professional athletes who have you know they come into a lot of money and aren't totally aware how to use it. And someone maybe through a referral, someone they know is like, oh, I can be your money manager. It's fine, and yeah. they actually spend or steal a lot of their money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that like. Uh, financial literacy is really important and yep. you know they needed to meet with like the rest of his operation yeah. you, know, you mm -hmm. have to be able to very intensely verify before you transfer money that's true Do, are you watching Inventing Anna or Tinder Swindler well there's other movies that talk about it but I saw I saw like an ad for inventing Anna. That's very Nick, interesting. Nick is watching inventing Anna. I want right to watch now. it too. It's very interesting because you can create a whole life and nobody will back tra um, back check you at mm -hmm. all about this. Yep. Like basically, you can lie to anybody. I can lie to you right now because there's no well, unless you find my old social. Well, medias. you have to be able to pull off the lie. Yes, mm -hmm. Miracle, you're not you're not exactly a fantastic liar, which is a that's a compliment. Okay, thank that's you. That's a compliment. You don't want to be a good liar. Also, I searched up. Simon the Tinder swindler mm -hmm. he he has like two different faces like he looks like two different people at different angles mm. and it's the weirdest thing to me and apparently there's that means you don't, can't trust him he's like Giannis yeah he's yeah. two-faced but also um apparently Cardi B made fun of him on Twitter 
by saying in one of her tweets that she was like um a quote from her tweet said basically my enemies are after me sad face sad face please send me 100k yeah that's like <laughs> that's it which i don't understand it also like he made these ass i didn't realize how quickly he was making these ass like it was like mm-hmm. months into a relationship i've known you guys for a while i wouldn't be like miracle my, so, something happened i need a hundred thousand dollars well like a lot of people are gullible like have you seen the girls that will scam guys on snapchat or like instagram saying like oh subscribe to my premium account and i'll give you more or like i can give you like a special night just with me alone no pass swerve none for me <laughs> thanks no like a lot of guys get scammed by it like um because Brett, please verify male behavior for us um the men are desperate sometimes uh there's a large pop that's that's a huge argument with people is talking mm-hmm. about how like only fans and women on these sites take advantage of a lot of uh young male loneliness uh mm-hmm. in a lot yeah, of ways that's a huge totally topic yeah. right now yeah like i um, still feel bad for my friends in cali I'm not throwing anybody like under the bus, but like a lot of them don't have experience like flirting with girls or like they're kind of out of practice. So like if a girl gives them special attention, like they try to jump at it real quick. Mm. So I feel like they could fall in the trap if they weren't like socially sound. I was going to do a thing about Pokimane today that, you know, a lot of the Twitch streamers, it's the same thing in a lot of ways. You know, Pokimane, like, um, I saw the article that you left on the laptop. Yep. That's an old photo and that's old news, even though she posted that a long time ago. That article was on Lad Bible today. Mm-hmm. Well, like, that photo was kind of old news. I because think like, anyone who's watching can follow this. The, I can't follow this conversation. The, oh, um, the, point, who, the point is mm-hmm. that a lot of women on these, on these uh, str- uh, streaming services, uh, mm-hmm. like Twitch, or women who were on OnlyFans, they take advantage of male loneliness yeah. the way this guy took advantage of the trust right. of people. Now, there's But is all, that fraud? Is it fraud? It I really don't, depends. Yes. I, I don't know because, like, he was offering them, like, a business idea, like, offering them money. Yes. So that's but where the it... the thing c- about it is he never, it, as far as anyone mm-hmm. can prove, this guy never had any actual contact with Netflix. Hulu mm-hmm. never actually had anything in production. Yeah. Whereas, like, if an OnlyFans girl is, like, I'll give you something special if you pay for whatever. And yep. then it's just like an extra foot of her, like a picture of her foot or whatever. Yep. Like yeah. that's not what they thought they were paying for, but like she has delivered something, you know, technically actually, she's not committing fraud. She's technically yeah. not committing fraud. Whereas this guy is committing fraud because mm-hmm. the intention, if, if you have a business deal, if someone invests in a company and it fails, mm-hmm. that's not fraud because the company failed. Exactly. Yeah. That kind of reminds me like before working here, like I was looking in, like looking for jobs especially online jobs because like i didn't have my vaccine yet and there was this one job on indeed.com i'll i'll i'm not telling people to sign up for them because apparently their job listing is still on indeed.com but they're called anime and smoke and like apparently he was advertising looking for artists any kind of form of art you are like it can be mixed media or anything he just needed artists for his app and then he was like oh um everybody's automatically hired but follow my discord uh link and i i wanted to see a little bit more i was like okay so apparently i got hired for this so i'm gonna go to his discord and then once we got into our his discord there was like over 100 people plus like joined the same day as me and we we're all introducing ourselves like telling him like what was our skill level and like what we can do and offer to his project and my friend and i um his real name is mitchell we're asking him because we did a voice call with him because he was like um join this voice call with me and we'll introduce what kind of product we're going to do and like what the project is and both of us at the same time asked him so how do we get paid for this because he didn't list on the job listing how we are getting paid Mm -hmm. and he was like well after we get a bunch of investors we already have investors from google facebook um for this product and i want it to be multi um more like basically multi-platform game so like he wanted to be on mobile he wanted to be on but he said basically like Mm -hmm you'll get paid after we get more investors yeah exactly yeah, yeah. exactly and like both my friend mitchell and i were like this doesn't seem right and then like my friend bug they didn't feel comfortable either so we made a different account where like we're like we're not guaranteeing you a job but here's a job website that guarantees you a safe way to get like job applications or like um actual like job listing for being an artist online 
again not guaranteeing you a, a full job it's just to help you lead you to the straight way and like the safest way so you don't mm. get scammed by him and after that my uh, my friend Mitchell, like, that project went downhill because he got busy with his own art project. I kind of helped him with, like, his own projects. I did voice acting for him. Um, but then my friend and I, we made our own channel. We're, like, we're planning to make our own studio where anybody can f- do whatever you want. Hmm. But then I got busy working here. Yeah. It's just weird. Like, it just went... Yeah, I think the thing is, like, mm-hmm. to your point, like, you have to be able to notify, yeah. like, where the red flags yeah. are. Yeah. And well, like, I checked his website too because he said he had a website, and I checked it. Basically, he was high, selling the high seas for anime, hmm. and then a lot of his stuff that he was selling, like the merchandise, wasn't like his own rights, and like he didn't have copywritten anything. Yeah, so he was like selling basically. They were just art. red flags. Everywhere. Yeah, there was a bunch of red flags, and then he disappeared from the channel for like months, and basically he sent us one comment saying um right now i'm still discussing with investors right now what to do with the project so you guys continue on your own on the side uh for the project and then come back and i'll come back soon like don't worry and it passed over a year and then like more people are joining and they're like um i'm new here i don't know what's happening and i'm like leave leave just leave it's yeah. dead he's not gonna pay you leave do a different job offer yeah 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 I still don't understand what the actual work was. The actual work was like he was looking for artists for this app. So the app idea was he was he wanted to do like this anime. So what did you what art did you actually do? Nothing. I didn't offer anything unless you offered me money first. Okay, that was the smart thing to do. Yeah. yeah so yes. um, basically, he was looking for artists who knew how like knew the anime community or like knew anything about arts, and he was like, um, I want it to be. Um, a mobile game mainly, but it's going to be on Xbox, PlayStation, and then PC. So hella red flags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. And okay. um, and he was like, it's going to be a Japanese role-playing game where your character can be any Japanese character within the anime um, universe. And I'm like, so where is the copyrights for that? Because a lot of the anime characters that you're listing, they're copywritten and like their companies will not let you use this unless you make it into a parody. And he was like, oh yeah, the parody rights act. Like I got that down and I was like, okay, so what are we going to do? And he, yeah. yeah. And then like he already had like people who were working on sound and like music. No, I think it's all like, scam. I mean, this it was like, like a, a huge scam. Scam, 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 scam. It was a huge scam. And then like somebody from that, same group later i found him on a dating app and i was like again that? get the hell off do you remember the when we worked dip. on that scam together <laughs> and then he was the tinder swindler it was, a, it was exactly. very, rom- it was very I, romantic i won't i really no 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 it, it's, it's a not, joke i know but i wanted to message him but i was like we don't match that well who cares and he was like a young kid too so i was like i, I don't want to deal with this okay well, it, yeah, but basically people can be gullible. Like I almost fell for a trap, but especially like, if they're struggling in the financial yeah, and mm-hmm. it sounds like oh, like maybe this is a chance to get my art out there. Mm-hmm. Like I mm-hmm. can understand wanting to do that. Yep. What is going on, everybody? It is episode fifty-eight of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is here with my co-host. Intro-